Okay, so, concept 7.1, which is the catabolic pathways yield energy by oxidizing organic fuels. Okay, so catabolic pathways uh, involve electron transfer. Um, so the electron transfer is, is like the major, plays a major role in the catabolic pathways. And this chapter is mostly going to be talking about cellular respiration and the, a lot of about the production of the ATP, specifically in the mitochondria. Okay, so as you know, uh, the breakdown of organic molecules is exergonic. Um, so um, organic compounds possess potential energy, and so the compounds that can participate in the reactions um, can act as fuels. Um, basically, uh, so through enzymic activity, a uh, cell breaks down uh, these potential energy, potential energy rich organic molecules to waste, uh, that breaks it down to waste products. Um, with much less like energy. energy. Um, so okay, then, uh, one of the catabolic pathways is uh, fermentation, and which is the partial degradation of of sugars um, that occurs without oxygen. Um, so that one happens, but the most effective uh, one is aerobic respiration, which consumes organic molecules and oxygen, um, and that yields ATP. Um, so, aerobic respiration, um, aerobic comes from, uh, it, it's most efficient, and aerobic comes from the Greek word um, air, as you see it on the slide, A-E-R, which means air in English, um, and bios, which it means life, so it takes air and it creates life. Um, and then the anaerobic respiration is similar, it's uh, basically the same thing, same like system process, except it uses other compa other compounds besides oxygen to do so. And the, you can see that it says and the prefix means like without, so without oxygen, without air. Right. So cellular respiration, um, we've been using it a lot. Um, so this includes both the aerobic and anaerobic processes, um, but uh, there was something, but it's like basically just, we mostly refer to it, we mostly refer to, anaer to reg regular aerobic respiration when we talk about cellular respiration. Um, and so two of the other, like among the other, so fermentation, okay, so anaerobic, um, so it consumes other compounds besides oxygen. Um, so like other compounds like uh, carbohydrates, fats, proteins, um, they're all they're all like consumed as fuel, and so so we can see this happening. So I'm gonna say so the, the cellular respiration it can be summed up um, the process as you take organic compounds, um, you add oxygen, and you get carbon dioxide, water, and energy. So basically, you can get energy without inputting energy to begin with. So you can see that here. Um, so this is the uh, the glucose. So this is your organic compound. Um, this is your oxygen, right? And then from that reaction, you get carbon dioxide, water, and then your your energy. So no energy input, there's uh, energy output. Okay, so the transfer of electrons during chemical reactions releases energy stored in organic molecules. Um, and so that energy uh, can be, like, that release energy is, can then be used to synthesize uh, ATP. Okay, chemical reactions uh, that transfer electrons between reactants it's, it's call, are called oxidation reduction reactions or redox reactions. Um, so the word redox comes from, like, so the RE comes from reduction and the, the like, the read, the RED comes from the reduction and ox comes from oxidation, so it's split, but it, I guess it made it sounded better. So redox reactions. Um, so and then then it's oxidation. Um, a substance loses electrons, or it's oxidized. Um, and re in reduction, a substance gains electrons, um, or it's reduced. So it's important to note that adding electrons is called reduction. I know it seems opposite, but that's it. Um, but remember that adding negatively charged electrons to an atom reduces the amount of positive charge to that atom. 
so it can still be reducing it even if you're adding something. Um, and so this can, this kind of shows it. So this is a generalized redox reaction. Um, so uh, this substance X, it has the electron right now. Um, so this is the electron donor because it's going to give away its electron because it starts off with it. And this is called the reducing agent because it reduces Y. Um, and I'm going to get to those vocab words in a second. Um, and so, and then the Y is called the oxidizing agent because it accepts the electrons. So as you see here, X, it gets, re it becomes oxidized. And so it's electrons then gets changed, it's transferred to Y. So the Y accepts it, the X gives it away. So that's why the X here is the electron donor, and this Y is the uh, accept it, it accepts, accepts it. So this process, the oxidizing and reducing, it always comes hand in hand. Okay, here's the uh, vocab word. So the electron donor is called the reducing agent, and the electron acceptor is called the oxidizing agent. Um, so in some, there are some cases with some uh, redox reactions um, that do not transfer electrons, uh, but it kind of changes the electron sharing in covalent bonds. Uh, so an example is the reaction between methane and oxygen, which this is it. So this is the methane um, combustion as an energy yielding redox reaction. Um, okay, so as it shows here, so the methane is the methane, it's the reducing agent, um, so, and uh, the oxygen here is the oxidizing agent. So the methane here, um, it, it they're both like, equally like electronegative, but because the oxygen is so electronegative, it kind of unbalances it. Um, so still, it becomes like this reaction still produces carbon dioxide, water, and energy. Um, and so the reaction releases energy to surrounding area to uh, to the surroundings because the electrons lose potential energy when they end up being shared unequally. So like the electrons get up like end up being shared unequally um, because spending more time near electronegative atoms such as oxygen uh, does that. Oxygen actually is because it's so electronegative. It's one of the most powerful oxidizing agents. Um, so yeah. Uh, redox reactions that move electrons closer to electronegative atoms like oxygen release chemical energy that can be put to work. Yeah. You know. Uh, okay, so now during cellular respiration, um, so fuel is oxidized and the oxygen is reduced. Um, and the organic the organic molecules with an abundance of hydrogen, like carbohydrates and fats, they're excellent fuels, we already know that. Um, so as hydrogen with its electron is transferred to oxygen, energy is released. We already know that. Okay, so this is the cellular respiration redox reaction. Um, so this is the fuel, this is the glucose, this is, and this is the oxygen. Um, so fuel, it's oxidized, and it's oxidized by the oxidizing agent, um, and the oxygen is reduced by the reducing agent. Yay! Okay, so as you can see, carbon dioxide, water, energy. Um, and the electrons lose energy during this process, and so that then energy is released. You know that, that's why we get energy here. Okay. So. In cellular respiration, glucose and other organic molecules are broken down into a series of steps. This is to prevent a gigantic explosion. Um, so, electrons uh, from organic compounds are usually transferred to NAD+, which is a coenzyme. Um, so, if energy was released uh, from the fuel at once, it can be harnessed efficiently for constructive work. Uh, constructive work. So, NAD is um, a, an electron carrier, and it's like it's it stands for, I'm going to murder this, um, nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. Oh, okay, I don't think I did that too bad. Um, and it functions as an oxidizing agent during res uh, respiration. And as you can see, it's an enzyme. It's a coenzyme, sorry. 
Uh, so it's an, as an electron acceptor, NAD functions as an oxidizing agent during solar oxidation. Um, so the reduced form of NAD um, plus is NADH, um, representing the stored energy that is trapped to synthesize AT3. Okay. Um, so then, okay. Enzymes called I'm also going to go to this dehydrogenesis. I don't know how to say that word. Um, facilitate the transfer of two electrons and one hydrogen ion to NAD plus. Um, and so in this process, one hydrogen ion is released in this process. So show this. Here it is. This shows it. This shows the dehydrogenase reaction. I just did not know how to pronounce that word. Here's your NAD plus. This is it. Yep. Okay. Um. Whatever. You know what I mean. Um. So NADH passes the electrons to the electron transport chain, um, which is a sequence of electron carrier molecules that shuttle electrons down a series of redox reactions uh, that release energy used to make ATP. And basically, everything about this chapter is how you make ATP. Um, so again, series of chains, and yay, got it. Okay, so this basically shows that if there's no if there's no steps, then it just like an explosive release, and you can't control that uh, it, you can't control that energy that's released. But in cellular respiration, uh, this just shows that there's a series of steps that makes it allow like that you can use the ATP as productive. Okay. Okay, so uh, harvesting the energy from glucose has three metabolic, metabolic stages. Um, so the first is uh, glycolysis, that's the method I pronounce it, uh, which breaks down glucose into two molecules um, in, uh, in the cytosol. And so pyruvate, pyruvate oxidation, and the citric acid cycle, uh, which is also called the Krebs cycle, uh, completes the breakdown of glucose in the mitochondrial matrix. Um, and this, the citric acid cycle, um, that actually, in prokaryotes, it, the breakdown of glucose to carbon dioxide takes place in the cytosol. A uh, little differentiation there. Um, and then the oxidative phosphorylation. Um, so that's, so the first two little points show, like, how they get some ATP, but it's kind of like substrate. Uh, it's not a lot, um, but the oxidative phosphorylation that kind of brings it all together that, that produces like the most ATP, um, and so it accounts for the, most of the ATP synthesis and occurs in the inner membrane of the mitochondria. And we're just going to watch a actually a quite lengthy video. It kind of sums up the process that we've been, I've been talking about, and it's just all cellular respiration.
filter, so I had to remember to unmute my uh, microphone. Okay, so in the next couple, like the next three slides, there's a figure, and so these are the, the color coding. Um, okay. Okay, so this one just, it's the very first one. Um, glycolysis, um, create substrate level, uh, substrate level, like, uh, ATP. And, okay, so then the pyruvate oxidation, um, makes more substrate level ATP. Um, and then the citric acid cycle, which is also known as the Krebs cycle. That happens, but there's still some electrons here um, that are like so carried by NADH and FADH2. And then this shows like the last one, um, so oxidative phosphorylation. Um, okay, so basic, so there's, so here, it basic during during the oxidative phosphorylation. Um, the electron transport chains convert the chemical energy to a form of form used for ATP synthesis in a process called um, it's chemiosmosis. So these two work together to create the large amount of ATP. Okay, so then uh, oxidative phosphorylation um, it accounts for almost like 90% of the ATP generated by cellular respiration. So, see in here, that's not, these don't generate much ATP. This is the one that really, it's really what, we, what makes the most ATP. Um, so, okay, so this process involves the transfer of inorganic phosphates to ADP. Okay, so a smaller amount of ATP, which, um, so this part, substrate level phosphorylation, that's what you saw here, that's what this is. Um, and so in this process, an enzyme transfer, transfers a phosphate group directly from a substrate molecule to ADP. And that is shown here. Substrate, there, ADP, the enzyme, this product, and ATP. So the phosphate, the phosphate on the substrate and then product ATP. That's the last slide. Thank you for watching, even though you kind of had to. So, yeah. Bye.